Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time it's another of my roughly six monthly channel updates. And what a strange update this is. The, the last of these updates I made in December 2019. You might remember if you saw it, I travelled to Wales for a couple of days, shot it on a beach in Wales in a, in a travel lodge. I couldn't do any of that stuff right now. The world is in this very, very strange state. And all the things I thought I'd be telling you about in uh, this mid-2020 update, most of them haven't happened because of uh, events in the world. So uh, I'm not going to travel to an exotic location to uh, do this video, but rather I thought I'd transport myself to my desk. Whoa, what a way to travel that is. And in fact, I've moved in both space and time because I recorded the introduction a few days ago. Isn't modern teleport technology amazing? It's getting better all the time. Anyway, what have I got to tell you about? Well, the first thing is a small personal matter. You might have noticed in the introduction, I've got a, a wound covering here. And this is because a few weeks ago, I had a nasty little thing removed from uh, my neck. I technically had a, a shave and a scrape of the skin there, but it's been analyzed since. It wasn't cancerous, so everything is fine. But the wound has become a bit problematic. It got quite badly infected. It's not healing very well. And so I thought I'd let you know about this because you'll probably see some sort of wound dressing in videos for a while. It's rather sensitive here at the moment for me to do my shirt. I've even put it on the microphone. It's tricky. And even when the thing is healed, fingers crossed, you're going to see quite a significant scar there, I think, a big red mark for some time. So I thought I'd let you know. So when you go, Chris, why have you got a very strange red mark just there on your neck? That's the reason because of, of what has happened. But um, I suppose I could start doing my shirt up from the top. Maybe I will, maybe I won't, probably. Well, I could wear a tie in videos, couldn't I? I don't think I'll do any of those things. I think I'll just make videos with a red mark on my neck right there. Anyway, enough of such things. Let's move on to matters related to computing. So, what can we say about the first half of 2020? Well, it's not turned out as we anticipated, has it? We didn't expect to be spending all this time in this thing called lockdown. And uh, when things really built up, that thing I should still probably still not mention in a YouTube video, but when the state of the world changed, shall we say, I made a conscious decision to keep explaining computers separate from it. I know a lot of YouTubers have been discussing all the things going on in the world. I decided it was best to keep explaining computers a sort of haven, a sort of place on a Sunday or wherever you happen to watch these videos. You could just come and watch the video and, and forget all that going on. OK, I've wrecked that for today, but that's the philosophy I'm going to continue with moving forwards as well. And of course, events in the world have changed a bit what's appeared on the channel. They've affected the availability of various things I would have looked at, and they've affected the ability of me to go out and do things like doing, say, interview videos or relocation reports. Hopefully those things will, well, they'll come back at some point in the future, but I don't think anytime soon. So, in terms of the videos we've had, there's been about 30 videos since I talked to you from a beach in Wales, and all kinds of things. I've enjoyed doing the Raspberry Pi project videos, particularly looking at the use of a Raspberry Pi to control servos. And then we took servos and we used them to feed a hamster. Where is he? Yes, there he is. There's the hamster we fed using the servos. People keep saying, bring the hamster back. Not quite sure how to bring the hamster back. Maybe I'll turn him into an animatronic hamster with servos inside him. Not a serious suggestion, but you never know. Might do something in the future with the hamster. And uh, we've also had various other Raspberry Pi projects. We uh, particularly did the um, Raspberry Pi Zero camera recently. There's been a, a few new single board computers, not that many, because there haven't been that many single board computers released. And there are some I know which haven't been released because they're still being held back by events in, in the world. But we have looked at the Odyssey X86J4105, which I think is a fantastic board, not just SBC. When you put it in a case like this, it's just a fantastic computer. Uh, you know, that, that's it, basically, isn't it? And um, as I said in my video about x86-based single board computers a few weeks ago, 
I like this board because I think it sits at the sweet spot in terms of price. You know, clearly, this is an expensive piece of kit. It's about $200, a lot more than something like a Raspberry Pi, but it competes very well against other boards. It gives you a lot of power for a lot less than the cost of certain other x86-based single board computers. I think it competes well against something like an Intel NUC. And I love the fact you can uh, flip the top off, if I can remember where it is. Somewhere was a flip the top off thing. There we are, we can flip the top like that. You can get inside, change around the drives, that type of thing. So I do like the Odyssey x86 J4105. We've also had the Odroid C4, there it is, and it's on its red board. That was an interesting board to look at. And we've had the uh, sort of new Raspberry Pi 4. It's not really a new Raspberry Pi 4, it's just got eight gigabytes of, of memory now. But that, that does change the state of play in the world of Pydom, as does USB booting, which I think is really, really important. And of course, I'll continue to come back and make videos about uh, Raspberry Pis. We've also had content around operating systems. We've had various videos about using Linux, setting up virtual machines, using the Linux terminal. Wasn't that popular a video, at least initially, but lots of people liked the, the idea of doing videos like that. I might come back to that type of thing. We've looked at the new Ubuntu 20.04. I'm very impressed with Ubuntu 20.04. Hadn't looked at Ubuntu for a while, and it is very, very nice in its latest uh, incarnation. And then we've looked at other sort of less mainstream operating systems, things like uh, Nomad BSD and uh, Cubes OS. I almost forgot the name of that security oriented operating system there. And I, it seems to me you like it when I look at operating systems. I'll continue to find out operating systems to look at and feature on the channel. Other than that, what's been going on? I'd made some copious notes. I always have to. I forget what I'd been doing yesterday, let alone over the, the past uh, six months. But, uh, oh yes, there have been videos on things like um, HTML, writing HTML code, Amazon Web Services. These weren't as popular videos, but the feedback on them from the people who watched them was very, very positive. And that's the thing I, I, I always struggle with. There are certain types of videos which I know the people who want to watch them will find really interesting and useful, but they won't be videos that many people watch. And in terms of running this channel as my business, I have to balance out things that um, lots of people will watch and things that I find interesting to do and people might find interesting to watch. And the, the final thing that's happened on the channel since I spoke to you like this last is I finally made the making of video, which so many of you asked me to do for so many years. It's taken me 12 years to do a proper making of video, but I did it fairly recently. And uh, thanks very much for all the positive comment I got on the uh, making of video. Something else that's happened since I last spoke to you like this is the end of support for Windows 7 in early January 2020. And so I thought I'd report back on my experiences since then because I was a very heavy Windows 7 user. And as you may recall, one of the things I was going to do was to uh, move to Linux on my uh, i3 box on my desk here. You can see Linux Mint is still running here very nicely. And uh, this is the machine I use for all of my admin work, as I call it, which basically means all my email, my web browsing, dealing with social media, uploading to YouTube, answering YouTube comments, running my business, doing my writing. Lots and lots of stuff happens uh, on this machine. And it's worked very well indeed. I found it a very positive, a very calming and gentle experience using uh, Linux Mint on this machine. It's the first machine I boot every morning, so I'm, I'm doing something in Linux Mint every day. And in fact, you might remember I fitted onto this machine a bay so I could switch the SSD to go back to Windows 7. I haven't been back to Windows 7 since mid-January, and I think that said it all about the success of moving from me onto a Linux Mint on this machine. Now, I am still running Windows 7 on my uh, video editing PC down here. You might recall from various things I've posted and I think a video earlier in the year that I actually upgraded the insides of this box to an i7-6700T with 32 gig of RAM just before the end of Windows 7. And I took this machine offline and I've been editing videos in Windows 7 offline ever since. And uh, that's been a very positive experience actually to actually work on a machine when I'm doing creative work when I'm offline. So I tend to go, in the morning, I'll go online in Linux, work on that, switch it over. The switch box I use to switch my keyboard and stuff over is a very old fashioned manual one, by uh, very much by choice. So I can't flick back and forth to an online machine. 
Once I've gone offline, I stay offline for often large chunks of the day. And um, although I might go and check my mail on my laptop at lunchtime or something or in the evening, I keep this machine offline. And I found that's been great for the creative process because there's no risk of interruption. You can't go and interrupt yourself by going and checking something online, social media, something like that. And it has forced me to be a bit more structured in my work because I can't go to a script which I, I write online in Google Docs on my offline machine. So I have to make sure the script is written, save the copy, put it onto this machine. But in fact, that's actually made me more productive and it's made my life a lot less stressful because I've had to focus more on planning, sorting out what I want to do, separate more out into a pre-production, production, post-production, post -production, the way we all used to work before our minds got messed up by this constant um, noise of, of the internet. So um, I found this, it's, it's been a positive experience moving in that direction. Final thing I want to say in this section though, is people do keep saying to me in the comments, why are you using Windows 10 in your videos when you, for example, uh, prepare an operating system, USB drive or a micro SD card for a single board computer? And the answer for that is very simple, that most people who watch my videos will be running Windows 10 as their operating system. I need to make the videos as accessible as possible. About 75% um, of people, three quarters of the people who watch videos on this channel are not subscribers, or at least they aren't logged in as subscribers when they, when they watch the video. And therefore, I have to think of that audience when I'm, I'm making videos, even though myself I'm running uh, Linux a lot of the time and uh, Windows 7 offline a lot of the time. So you cry, what is coming up on Explaining Computers in the future in the coming weeks and months? Well, as usual to answer that question, I've got my uh, video slate here, my file in uh, Google Docs, which has all my uh, ideas for what's coming up. Very locked down at the top, gets less locked down as it goes down the page. And every time when you make a video comment and you say, what about a video on this? And I say, that's a good idea or noted. I will put it down in this file. It eventually might, might float to the surface. But anyway, what is coming up right now? Oh, look, there's a video coming up. This is very exciting. It's called Channel Update July 2020. Let's make that one. I'm making it now. There we are. What's amazing what's happening in the world. After that next week, the plan is to return to these two little guys here, the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 and the Odroid C4 to do a head to head. And I'm sure you'll go, but surely, Chris, the Pi will win. It's got better support. It has. But uh, I think it's important we do look at the uh, competitors to the Pi. And uh, I always think, what's it like being a single board computer manufacturer other than the Raspberry Pi Foundation? Because for a few years, they competed on the fact, oh, we've got USB 3 and we've got more memory. We've got 4K. And then the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 came along and said, we've got that now as well, guys. It made their lives difficult, didn't it? And I think we should therefore pay a lot of respect to the smaller manufacturers who are trying so hard to make boards that do compete with the, the Raspberry Pi 4. So we'll check these out next week. I'm also going to be doing a video fairly soon on Linux Mint 20. Very look, look, much looking forward to looking at my next version of a Linux Mint. There'll be a video on a quantum computing. I've done a quantum computing update for many years now annually, and I think I'll do that again, get my head back into the world of a quantum computing. There'll be a Raspberry Pi Zero Media Player video. I promised you that. That's coming up fairly soon. I'm thinking probably going to do a video on CSS, introduction to CSS, the same way I did an introduction to HTML. It wasn't that popular a video, as I said a few minutes back, but the people who liked it really liked it. And it's this is an educational computing channel. I, I feel it's a good idea to do some proper educational computing content uh, every now and then. Also down here, Raspberry Pi weather station. I've got some very different ideas about how to do a Raspberry Pi weather station. That's definitely going to be coming up. There'll be a video probably called something like Raspberry Pi Ultimate Rig or Ultimate Raspberry Pi 4 Rig or something like that. Basically saying now the Pi is getting more and more powerful. How could we rig out a Pi in the most ultimate way. That just sounds an exciting title to make a, a video on to me. And there'll be a video called something like Raspberry Pi 4 Tips and Tricks. So I can pass on all those little tips and tricks that when people watch a video, they sometimes go, how did you get that there? How did you get that indicator working? This sort of stuff. Things that don't make a video by themselves, but if I put lots together, might make an interesting video. And also down here, it reminds me that I'm still planning to do a Raspberry Pi 4 hovercraft 
Yes, I am. Now, uh, there will be some content on 3D printing, but it won't be what I normally do in September, which is to go to the big uh, TCT 3D printing show because it's not currently on. It's been cancelled for this year. The place it's made out, the NEC in Birmingham, is currently kitted out as a hospital, so that's clearly not going to happen this year in quite the same way. But I'll do something on 3D printing, hopefully in September. Uh, something on security. Lots of requests to do security. Something on networking, but maybe sharing files across platforms. There are a lot of requests about file sharing on Linux and Windows and that type of stuff. I will go back to AI. I haven't figured out how yet, but I will do more on AI and also on robotics. And I will do another build, another PC build. I don't know what the build will be yet, but there's lots of requests for build. I will do another build, I think, before the end of 2020. Anyway, those are the sort of things coming up. Hopefully at least some of those will interest you and keep you watching the channel. Thanks uh, very much for subscribing and remaining subscribed and all your support you give to the channel. Thanks to all of you who participate in the community tab here when I post things there. We've had some fantastic discussion in the community tab in, in, in recent weeks and months. But uh, now I think that must be uh, it for another video. So uh, if you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,